flying fortresses arrives in Santiago, Chile, bearing a military mission from the United States. Heading the delegation is the chief of American forces in the Caribbean zone, General George Brent. On the side of General Brett's plane are painted the flags of the countries visited by the mission. The Order of Military Merit of the United States is bestowed upon General Roberto Larraine and other Chilean officers. With the United States representatives is their host, President Rios. fly overhead, the flags of the 21 South American republics had a parade, a festive celebration of Chile's Independence Day. States Bomber Mission watched the ceremonies, an impressive show of Chilean strength. <music> Alfred E. Smith, four times governor of New York, is dead at 70. This is Al Smith in the 20s with his wife Katie at the state capitol at Albany, New York. His famous brown derby and the big cigar. Although Al Smith was defeated in his 1928 campaign for the United States presidency, his progressive and humanitarian ideas have been a lasting influence on American government. Paying tribute to his memory, citizens by the tens of thousands mass outside St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York for solemn funeral services. Mrs. Franklin D. Roosevelt among the mourners. Herbert E. Lehman, successor to Smith as governor, now director of the United Nations Relief and Rehabilitation Administration. true man of the people. The Foreign Economic Administration and the Army Service Forces now operate special produce farms to provide fresh vegetables and fruit for American troops on Guadalcanal and nearby islands. Watermelons, a real delicacy, are among the variety of good things which are grown and transported to men in the jungle interior of the Solomons. The produce is packed in strong cases, cushioned to take up the shock of parachute landings. transport plane carries them to distant areas. Out of the plane by parachute, men of the air delivery section drop the containers to isolated batteries on guard far from the coast.
this outpost patrol on the fighting line, watermelon is a welcome gift from the skies. In the first of many Pacific Island groups from which the enemy has now been driven, a brief happy respite from battle. Princess Martha of Norway arrives for ceremonies at the Norwegian Naval Anti-Submarine Gunnery School at Travers Island, Pelham, New York. The commanding officer of the school, Fur W. Lee and Princess Martha. Norwegian flag comes down. Norwegian sailors assigned to this course have now all been fully trained. The school has accomplished its mission. Through the valiant service of thousands of her men, fighting alongside her allies in Army, Navy, Air Force, and Merchant Marine, Norway continues her relentless struggle against the enemy. bombers over La Havre, a great channel port at the mouth of the Seine. Incendiary target markers fill the air, followed by a rain of bombs on German military installations. After a 36-hour combined air and artillery assault, Men and arms of General Crayar's Canadian First Army move into the outskirts of the second largest port of all France. Following German surrender, our forces enter the city. Le Havre, as a military port, will require extensive reconstruction. On the English side of the channel, 15-inch coastal guns open a devastating artillery barrage against the entrenched enemy in Boulogne. One-ton shells hurtle on their way. Boulogne falls to Canadian forces. The bitter fight, due to the long-continued enemy resistance, has reduced most of the port to rubble. Here at Boulogne, as isolated German coastal strongholds fall one by one, 9,000 prisoners are taken, adding to the more than a million Nazi casualties since D-Day. Their army now draws heavily on ill-suited replacement material. Calais. A final bombing as the prelude to enemy surrender. All civilians evacuated, the RAF smashes German gun positions only 27 miles across the channel from England. Anti-aircraft brings down one of our planes, but the crew bails out in safety. In furious assault, the air forces paved the way for capture of Calais by Allied ground forces and the cleaning up of the important channel ports. <laughs> 